How long do you stay on the drill? Time I keep, I, I, even with my kids, I do a timing sheet for practice. I don't stay on it very long. I have uh, no more than five minutes of anything, especially with the young kids. So I try and, that's why I work on going from one to the next to the next to the next. Some of them are very similar, building up on each other, but I always try and change it up quickly so they're not too bored. Or, or, so, you know, planning, I think, is the most important thing to that. So you're not sitting there having to think about the next drill. Um, or what are we doing next? It becomes a lot easier. It also makes practice go a lot quicker. I always have more than I ever get done in my practice. Um, I have a three-on-three -three ground ball in front of the goal. This is kind of your shot, rebound type drill. So I'll have three defenders talk about blocking out, clearing, you know, throw it to the goalie, have the goalie roll it. And the kids will have to turn in like basketball, attack and scoop through the ball and break up the field. So it's a good, taking the ground ball into a game situation, just another next step in the drill there. And it can be three on three, four on four, two on two whatever it is, but I think it really gives them the idea of blocking out and going after ground ball and, and getting their head up the field to, to do it. Could you go through that again? Is that you have three defenders, three So what I do is, is if we have the goal here, I'll just put the uh, three attack players like this, 3D, something like that, and I roll and cast the ball to the goal, you roll it out this way, random. And I'd have this guy step off, this guy go for a ground ball, and then, you know, we just break out and try and clear the ball. But the idea of boxing out, just like in a basketball rebound, you know, you do ground balls, but it's a different concept than that a little bit, because it's rebounds, it's, it's everything that you've done here, but it changes the way they think about it. Yeah, if I do it this way, because now they're thinking, of more of really using the body and the hips to protect that ball. Otherwise, the other team's going to pick it up and be able to shoot. Rather than just thinking about going after that ball. And we've all seen that. I can tell you last night, the game we lost. One of our defenders, guy shoots, he does this, walks in wide open with the rebound, four fakes, goal, down by two. And so it's important at every level. I always break down dodging into uh, different areas to set up uh, a deceptive move and then the actual dodge. So I'm trying to get kids to understand um, what a stutter step is, and that's usually what I use for setup. Uh, a deceptive move is a twist of the upper body, a hop of the leg, something that sells the defender that you're going to do something one way, but really you're setting up to do another way. Uh, one of the areas I've been focusing on is the ability to isolate the hips from the upper body. And I'm kind of I'm going back to some passing on the, on the run. Most kids, when they start, will start doing this sideways. So I've been working pretty hard lately on getting kids their hips here and be able to turn so they can now run and pass the ball. And um, same thing the other way especially. Being able to run and bring the stick back this way and pass the ball without them going side to side. Starts to teach them how their legs can really separate from the upper body. And this becomes real important when we talk about dodging because even on a, if I stutter, and take a step this way. Notice my hips stay straight, but I turn my upper body. So it appears I'm going in this direction, but I've set myself up in good position to go the other way. So that even that passing down the field starts to teach them how to adjust their upper body from their lower body. And it's tough for them. I will admit that. You guys start early and go over a lot of it. Um, so I always break down teaching dodging one step at a time. Now you just start pretty simple. Um, getting into, I want you to come at me, stutter step, and run by me. I want you now to come by me, stutter step, and do a hop and change the direction. 
So I'll try and kind of show you what I do. So if I come at them, I'll just teach them real basic. Come in, stutter step, run by me. And I explain the stutter step. The stutter step, slight shoulder turn, small steps, makes the defender freeze. Because with each little step, go this way or that way, so they, they're stuck frozen. And that allows you then to set up on a hop. I like to hop, land it on a bent leg, turn the upper body, sell the direction. Bring it this way, same thing. It looks like I'm going that way. The hips straight over that foot. Biggest thing that kids make the mistake about when you teach them that is they'll stutter and they'll straight leg it. And you guys see this all the time. Like when the kid comes in, he goes, and tries to change direction that way. What that does, as soon as you put your leg out like this, it telegraphs you going the other way. So I really focus on teaching them how to hop into a bent position so it looks like you're really going to go that way. So by getting down low, that concept alone will be huge for the kids when they start getting into dodging. To be able to understand blend bent legs so you can push the other direction will really take them to the next level. So I start with the stutter, add that, a lot of correction on that step, and just have them run by, run by. They get good at that, then we start add, adding the dodges, making sure the body's turned, protect the stick, all that. So going into, coming in, you know, switching hands, split dodge, power dodge, face dodge, uh, strong roll dodge, weak roll dodge, rocker step dodge, all those different types of dodge. Kind of, you want me to kind of go through how they each other. What's that? Okay. If I'm going to do, um, I guess, a split dodge, I kind of go two ways with it. Some people, a split dodge thinks they need to switch hands on it. Other times, I'll consider a split dodge where I make like I'm going to go weak and come back strong. Or I'll come in and I'll split and come out and switch hands. So that's kind of, I call it two different things, but really essentially the same thing. The setup's the same. The stutter into a hop. And then show them going one way, power out the other, and always turning the body. So even if I come in, I stutter, and I go this way, notice I turn to protect, bring the stick down below the chin, hand comes to the top of the stick, keep it in, not obviously pinned, but in tight. And then the minute I come out of it, the same thing, the body always turns to keep that stick in between the shoulder. What a lot of kids will do is they'll make moves and they'll move their arms a lot. So I try and get them to keep them in between the shoulders and move the shoulders rather than the arms. And that's a tough concept for them to get. It really is. But if you can teach that in all of the dodges that they practice, now they're going to be able to keep that stick in and protect it when they're making the moves. And if they can learn to always keep their back turned to the defender, they'll become a lot more successful. 